Hi students, welcome to HSE Chemistry and Module 6, Acid Based Reactions. This is video number 9 and we're going to start looking at the bronsted lowry model in just a little bit more detail. In the last video we looked at how models can change and the importance of empirical evidence and observation in helping us to clarify our uh, understanding of chemistry and also of the nature of matter. We have had a number of different um, models for acids and bases over uh, hundreds of years and our models have continued to be refined on the basis of observations that we see. So uh, one of the things that we want to look at is the fact that up until our senior years the Arrhenius model is a pretty good model. You remember the Arrhenius model is about hydrogen ions in solution. So as long as there are hydrogen ions in solution um, this model works fine. Um, but the problem is that occasionally uh, when we look at bases, hydroxide ions are not uh, necessarily a part of what we can see um, being created by the substance which is basic. So here's an example of a reaction. So zinc carbonate plus um, an acid uh, producing zinc ions, carbon dioxide, and water. So we know this is an example of a neutralization reaction. We've looked at a few of these now and we say we know this is neutralization. So if it's a neutralization reaction, it's produced water and it's produced carbon dioxide, then it gets a tick. So therefore we must have an acidic substance and a basic substance. So the H plus ions fits our Arrhenius model nicely. That's okay but the zinc carbonate does not. There's a bit of a problem here. Something is um, not quite fitting our Arrhenius model. So therefore, this is a, uh, an observation that we can make that is contradictory. Um, our, uh, our model, the model of uh, bases that was um, suggested by Arrhenius. The other one is the example that I briefly mentioned on the previous video, which is ammonia. And if you soak, um, say, some cotton wool in each of these two solutions, ammonia and hydrochloric acid, then the vapors that are given off can combine and produce a chemical reaction. So um, if it's the gas, we would call it hydrogen chloride. It's dissolved in water, it becomes hydrochloric acid, and it forms um, this white smoke here. And this white smoke is a solid, and it's called ammonium chloride. Now, this is a reaction that's occurring uh, with no water. So if there is no water, then there are no H plus nor OH minus ions. So here's a couple of examples of chemical reactions uh, that we see where we have one which produces water as a neutralization reaction but doesn't have hydroxide ions obviously being produced. Uh, another one which doesn't even produce water at all. So what's going on? How do we classify these and how does our model need to change in order to incorporate these types of examples? Well, it's the bronsted lowry definition that actually solves this problem, and it solves the problem for both examples. It relies on the fact that acids are proton donors. The simplest way to demonstrate the bronsted lowry model for any of these is to simply say, if we were to put a molecule of hydrogen chloride into water, what we would notice is the H plus ion is going to come from here. It's going to be donated from the molecular species and it's going to go to the water molecule. What that's going to leave is a Cl minus as the H plus leaves it. It'll remain in the solution, obviously, and an H3O plus ion. This is known as the hydronium ion and it is the one that we are measuring when we look at things like pH and we'll look at that in more detail later. 
Um, the hydronium ion is an indicator that we have an acidic solution and that the acid has donated a proton, an H plus ion, to the water molecule to form this particular species. We can actually have a look at pairs and we'll have a look at the Bronsted Lowry model in a little bit more detail later on, but we can actually pair each of these up. We can look at an acid that has lost or donated its proton and has become what we call a conjugate base. And the substance which acts as a base, and in this case, the water actually acts as a base and accepts that proton and therefore the hydronium ion would be referred to as the conjugate acid. And so we have some, some pairs here, an acid and its conjugate base are one pair and a base and its conjugate acid are another pair. And they're related to each other by the hydrogen ion or the proton. So the, that proton is either lost from one species to its conjugate or gained from one species to its conjugate. We can do exactly the same thing, assuming that bases are proton acceptors. So if we looked at the, um, let's go back a bit to the carbonate example. So CO3 2 minus, this is the carbonate ion that we get from something like zinc carbonate, uh, from sodium carbonate and, and so on. If we again look at water, water's a nice universal substance and it's good for looking at these sorts of examples, then if this is a base, then that means according to the bronsted lowry model, it's a proton acceptor. So this time the H plus has actually kind of come from the water to our, um, to our base. That means that the H, uh, that the CO3 becomes an HCO3 minus, its charge has changed, and the water molecule having lost a, um, proton now becomes hydroxide. So you can see that's where um, we are, have that link back to the Arrhenius definition. So carbonates do actually liberate more hydroxide ions in solution. It's just they don't do it obviously. You have to kind of work through it. Notice now that, acid, that the water which was acting as a base in our previous reaction is now acting as an acid and our bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate ion is our conjugate acid and the hydroxide ion is the conjugate base. Now we'll look at these in a lot more detail as we explore the bronsted lowry model because it is such a, a good example of, uh, a good way of looking at a wider range of acids and bases and being able to classify lots of different types of reactions. Once again, we can identify our acid and our conjugate base and our base, oops, our base, with our conjugate acid, but we'll look at these pairs in a little more detail as we go further along. Thanks for watching.